Are you looking to take your personal finances to the next level? Well, you're in the right place. Welcome to the Monday Money Tip Podcast, presented by I Was Broke, Now I'm Not, with your host, Joseph Sangle. Welcome to episode number 38 of the Monday Money Tip Podcast. My name is Joseph Sangle, fired up to be a part of your money journey. I'm joined by my co-host, as always, Megan Hibbard. How are you doing today? Great. You're fired up? Yeah, fire This up. is awesome. We've done some restructuring in the studio here. Now you can see We're recording it for YouTube so that everybody <laughs> can see us on YouTube, but we're sitting really Very. abnormally close to each other. It is close. This is the smallest table I've ever seen. You should check it out on YouTube. It's really awkward. Uh, and uh, we're, we're uh, just a few days away from you having a major event happen in your life. Yes. And what's that? Remind everybody. We are soon to be welcoming our first son. Yes. And she's First not baby. revealing the name to anybody. No one knows. And so I've been guessing the names and I've guessed Russian names and Hispanic names and American names and all types of names. And she, she, she just will not give at all. Nope. So, um, it's going to be a great moment and we're super excited for you guys. It's going to be great. And so, uh, there may be a period of time here where I have random co-hosts because, uh, Miss Megan Hibbard's going to be out being a mom for their brand new baby boy, and that's great. I'm excited about that part, but I'm sad I won't be here. Yeah, I know that. For this. And I think everybody's going to be sad that they're not hearing your your wonderful <laughs> voice helping them uh, in their money journey. Uh, I, it is awesome to have you as a co-host, by oh, the way. thanks. I wanted to say that publicly. I Very enjoy good. it. Uh, so it's, talk, tell everybody about the topic today. It's the yes. last Monday it's of the, the month. the last Monday of the month, so we're going to be answering your top money questions um, ideally rapid fire style. Um, so we can get through as many. Is that as possible, possible for me? <laughs> I've seen the notes and I think it might be <laughs> if you stick to the notes. I'm not going to stick to the notes, but I will, <laughs> I will say this. We get these questions from you. So from the podcast listeners, emailing us, uh, asking us questions, we love to feature your questions on the podcast. So keep sending those this way. Yep. So our questions today will range from, Credit card use to an emergency fund to dollar cost averaging. How does that work? Um, car insurance premiums, bankruptcy, and retirement accounts. Yeah, so, we're going to so talk about all the, all the things wide today. Wide spectrum. That's great. Yeah. But that leads us, before we get to all those questions, to that favorite moment of the podcast. You know what time that is. Let's go. Now it's time to get caught up with our current money events. This portion of the podcast is sponsored by I Was Broke, Now I'm Not. Take your finances to the next level by utilizing their financial tools and calculators. Visit IWBNIN.com and click on Tools. We have budgeting templates, debt freedom date calculators, retirement calculators, investment calculators. They're all right there at your fingertips, and they're all free. That's right. They're all free, and we've had more than a million people download them. We want you to be one of those millions and super excited about it today is the time when we update you as a current event about the national debt. And the last time we updated this was November 26th, and we're going to make it our habit to update this quarterly. And it is my dream, people. It is my dream in this current money events, nailed it section, and I know you love it, is to be able to uh, one day report that the national debt went down. That would be something. That's my dream. <laughs> Just as we want you to be able to report that your debt went down, we want to hear that the United States national debt has went down, and we're going to do some things about it. And the first thing we can do is educate you about what's happening with it. Since our last update in November 26th, I was telling you that we were almost $22 trillion in debt. Well, we have hit the milestone. We have exceeded <laughs> that, and at the time of this recording, it's $22 trillion, $110 billion, $393 million, $60,431. Wow. I'm sure by the time I got done reading that sentence, it's up several billion. Probably. But that figures out to, listen, last time the debt per citizen was under $67,000. It's now exceeded it. It's $67,265 per citizen. Man, woman, and your babies. So as soon as your baby boy is born, he's going to be sixty-seven thousand two hundred sixty-five dollars in debt. And uh, that, is that exciting? But he'll be a little angel. He'll be an angel. That's right, and he's <laughs> going to help reduce that debt. Uh, and then that per taxpayer, because not everybody pays taxes. You know, your kids don't pay taxes. Yeah. There's other people who are not employed. Uh, it's one hundred eighty thousand five hundred fifteen dollars per taxpayer. Wow. That's a lot. That's a lot. And so uh, that's an important thing to talk about. And so here's what I just want to say to each of you. This is not a much of a problem when economic times are great, but it can become a problem, a huge problem 
when economic times are not great. And I will tell you, that time will come again, even though we've been experiencing a really good nine-year bull market, so to speak. The day will come when we have economic challenges again, and that's when I have belief that even though we have a crazy system for legislation, (laughs) that there will be a day that we start paying attention to that and making decisions that will affect it. So here's what I encourage each of you to do. I want to encourage you to consider the position of any political candidate who's running for office. I want you to consider their position on the debt and let it be one of the things. It can't be the only thing, but let it be one of the things that guides you on your voting. And trust me, all parties, the major ones and the minor ones, have people who are interested in reducing the debt. They have people who are interested in just spend, spend, spend. Uh, So this is not a political party thing. They both seem to have a proclivity to spending all the money. Mm -hmm. Uh, So let's work together to become informed on their stances and use your voice. It's a beautiful thing that you have here is to be able to use your voice to encourage our representatives to focus on reducing how much debt we're accruing as a nation. That's it for the current money events section. (laughs) That was something. (laughs) All right, so now we're going to go into our success story. Today, our success story comes from Vanessa. And Vanessa said, Thank you, Joe. The most helpful information I learned was that I did not have my priorities in order and that it have been a hindrance to my progress. Also, since my priorities were out of order, my tithing suffered. I'm pleased to inform you that I have reassessed and refocused. I've created new achievable goals, set up my online banking savings account. So she's using the online banks that we recommend That's on our great. website. It's awesome. Set up automatic withdrawals for my tithe at 10.01%. I love the one. (laughs) And uh, on step two of of setting up her monthly emergency savings. That's rung number two. two The hours broke down, not ladder. So I printed out my goals in the ladder and put it in a place where I can see it every day to remind me to stay focused. I thank God for putting it on Pastor David Davis's heart to bring you to speak to us. So that's one of our churches we've been to. That's right. We've been speaking Mm -hmm. at. It's awesome. And I also thank God for the courage to stop lying to myself and allowing the scales to fall from my eyes to see reality. I now see a brighter future instead of a mountain blocking my view. Have a blessed day, Vanessa. Well, Vanessa, thank you so much, number one, for taking the time to share your story. And you've taken some monumental steps forward. Uh, You're giving, you're saving, you're climbing the ladder, and you have a vision for the future, which is the most powerful thing that you have. And that really provides fuel. So I encourage everybody... Get that ladder printed out at iwbnin.com slash ladder. You can read how to apply it in our book, I Was Broke, Now I'm Not. Grab a copy of that at Amazon or through our website, and I'm confident it will help you get a vision for your life and for your money so that you can win, and you can be sharing your success story with us like Vanessa did. Great job, Vanessa. Awesome. So now, the moment, we're going to start with our um, rapid-fire questions. Yes. So these are some top money questions that you guys have asked. Um, again, if you guys have questions, feel free to send those in at info at IWBNIN.com, and we would be happy to answer those. We're going to answer them every month at the end of the month. So if you think of questions throughout the month, just shoot us an email or call us, and we'll fit them in there. Love it. So you ready? Yep. All right. Question number one. Is it a good idea to use credit cards regularly as long as you pay them off without incurring interest each month, especially if they are cash back or reward base cards? What do you think the answer is, Megan? Um, well, I think as long, it depends on the person. So I think if, if you are definitely paying them off without recurring the interest um, and you know that you're disciplined in that category, I don't see a problem. My husband and I love using the reward programs. Um, we currently do airline miles, so that's how we go on a lot of our trips. Yeah. Um, but we know every month we have to pay the credit card bill. We don't let any of them. In full. Yeah, in full. And so, so. The, the swift answer to using credit cards is the credit card is not the problem. It is the people using the credit card, and the credit card enables impulsiveness. So if you're running up a balance and paying interest every month, absolutely not. You should not have credit cards. You can't outrun 21.99%, 23.99%, 29.99% interest. You can't. So as long as you use them with a plan, you don't overspend with them, and you never, ever pay interest and fees with them, have at it. Yeah. Very few people can say that they they don't overspend with them. And so how do you avoid it? Have a budget, follow the budget, and they'll work out very well for you. 
And so I encourage you, if you're doing very well with that, keep doing that. Uh, credit cards are not the problem. They are a facilitator of a deeper problem. Awesome. So that was good. You did, you did quick. Was that fast? Yeah. That's great. <laughs> All right. Number two, how much money should I have in an emergency fund? How much money should you have in an emergency fund? Well, it's not a number uh, that I can name. It is a number that you can name. And that is, ideally, think of the I was broke, now I'm not ladder. It, rung number two says save one month's worth of expenses. Mm -hmm. And so if you're just starting out in your journey and you've got some debt and all that stuff, that one month's worth of expenses looks a lot like your one month's worth of income. So that's your first goal. How do you fund it? Tax refund, a bonus, selling some stuff, working overtime, getting a second job, cutting out some expenses. That's one way to do it. And then ideally, you have a minimum of three months worth of expenses. And that is when you get to rung number five of our I was broke, now I'm not ladder. And of course, you may be a saver and you're not comfortable three months worth and you want six months worth. <laughs> and maybe you want 12 months worth. But if you have more than 12 months worth, can I encourage you take the extra dollars and go invest those? But it's different strokes for different folks. You know, start with that one month's worth right. and then think about a minimum of three months worth when you get to rung number five. Anything above and beyond that, good for you. That is fantastic. Awesome. All right. So the next question is how does dollar cost averaging work? Now, this is a complex term, dollar cost averaging. And there's a lot of people driving right now who are like, I'm going to tune out. I don't know what that is. But really, this is very important, and it's about investing. Dollar cost averaging is where you're taking your investments and you're investing over a period of time multiple times. So a lot of people want to time the market, so to speak. They right. want to buy an investment at a specific time. And this really applies to the purchasing of mutual funds, of stocks, uh, through your 401k or similar type retirement savings plan. And the concept of dollar cost averaging is that you're buying as, uh, an amount every single month or on some consistent basis. Sometimes the market is up. Sometimes it is down. Sometimes it's way up. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's way down. But the whole key is that you continue investing. And as a result, you have the benefit of buying at low prices a lot and you buy at higher prices. But over time you do much better to do this purchasing consistently over time than you do buying all of it at one time and trying to time the market. So that's what dollar cost averaging does for you. And so think about it this way. The economy collapsed in 2008. Yeah. It just collapsed. The market, uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped down to the middle 6,000s. That was horrific. It was awful. And uh, many people continue to buy. Why? Because they some many people still had employment. They're contributing to the retirement accounts. And they were buying at a very, very low price per share. And now, subsequently, the market has went up above 25000 Think about that. And people's investments have went up 4x, four times, because they were doing dollar cost averaging. And that's a huge benefit to people. Hmm. And so make sure you're continuing to invest. It's better to do a little bit all of the time on a consistent basis, then try to plop a big chunk of money one time and try to time it. Yep. Awesome. Okay. Our next question, how can I lower my car insurance premium? How do you lower the cost of your car insurance premium? Well, there's a couple of great ways. Yep. Um, one of them is to reduce the deductible or increase the deductible that reduces the premium. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I would ask you the question, and you may or may not know this, uh, driving, maybe you're sitting at your desk, whatever it is when you're listening to this podcast, but ask yourself the question, how much is your deductible on your car insurance? And here's one of the things that I've learned is that when you're broke, I used to be broke, I really know what this is like, is you run to having the lowest deductible because you can't imagine paying a $1,000 deductible. Sure. So I had a $250 deductible. And I found out that just by doubling my deductible from 250 bucks to $500, my premium dropped. The guaranteed payment amount dropped by over 250 bucks. Hmm. So in other words, I only had to, I took on an extra $250 of risk, increasing my deductible from 250 to 500, but my guaranteed cost dropped by that amount. So I, I said, I only have to drive for one year without an accident and I've won this gamble. And I, I, I bet on myself. 
It was a good win. Did you did you win? I, I did win. I've won every year there after. That's I've never awesome. had that accident, praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. But I would say this, you know, look at your deductible and say, hey, could I bump it up and see how much that save you? Obviously, if I would increase my deductible by 250 bucks and it saves me $10 a year, I would have to go 25 years to recover the additional risk I've taken. Mm-hmm. 25 years without an accident. It's not worth it. Yeah. But if it's a massive change, that's a great way to look at it. Uh, another way is to bundle. Bundle your insurance with your home insurance or your renter's insurance, whatever your dwelling is. When you bundle your insurance together, generally you'll save 10 to 30% on each premium. And so 15 minutes or less could save you 15% or more. Of course, you already knew (laughs) that, right? And we do have a link on our website under the Next Steps Insurance area where I recommend you get quotes every two years. That's another way to save money. And so you can click on there, type in your information, you'll get new quotes uh, from all the different providers, and you'll find out that you could save a lot of money. On your car insurance. Of course, the obvious ones are what? Share those with everybody. Yeah, so one obvious one is to avoid tickets. Yeah, don't speed. Don't speed. I know it's hard. Or but if don't. you do speed, don't get caught. I don't know how to do that, but. Yeah, it's just too big of a risk. <laughs> I don't. I think since I've gotten pregnant, I drive differently. So yeah. I drive a lot more cautiously. Baby on board. Ba- baby on board. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been on board, but now apparently baby on board too. Um, and I'm sure it will change more once once he's here but um i find myself speeding less being in less of a hurry taking less risk you know when yep. you're when you're turning less somewhere you you really wait make people behind you mad maybe <laughs> but i don't care <laughs> the, um so that's one another one is to um avoid accidents is you know the best of your yep. ability don't drive crazy yeah don't drive recklessly um and then a big one is drunk driving so yeah. don't do that just don't do that that's yeah. just dumb and I will tell you, I've done coaching for a lot of people who are on the so-called SR22 or whatever insurance, which is the only type of insurance they can get when they've been yeah. uh, convicted of a DUI. And it is expensive. Yeah, it's not worth it. Yeah. So uh, that's how you can lower your car insurance. Yeah, that's great. All right, our next question is, what happens if I file for bankruptcy? Uh, what, what, what happens emotionally or what happens financially? I feel like that's a very loaded question. Uh, this one might uh, take some time. You'll be, it'll be an emotional experience. It, uh, it feels like failure. It feels like you are a failure. Uh, many people have went through it. It's yeah. a disaster. But I want to tell you, you can recover from it. Right. And But I will tell you financially what happens. And the first thing that happens is your credit will be shot. And w- things that you need to know if you're considering bankruptcy is you cannot bankrupt on student loans. You will have to pay them whether you declare bankruptcy or not. And many people actually will say, I want to, I need my car. So they'll actually hold their car out of the bankruptcy and keep making payments. Huh. And at the end of the day, bankruptcy didn't accomplish what they thought it would do. And so it is usually much better for the individual to call their creditors and work out a deal between them and their creditor. Right. Uh, it gives you the value of knowing you, you solved the problem on your own. And there's a lot of jobs, especially ones that require security clearances and that sort of thing, where they don't ask the questions, have you declared bankruptcy in the last three years or five years? It's, have you ever declared bankruptcy? No. And it can cost you the ability to get that job. And so I encourage you to make sure that you work on your own financial issues. If you're in a great financial challenge and your credit shot already, hey, your credit shot already. Learn to how to do a budget. Learn how to live by a budget without incurring new debt so that maybe after six months, you'll find out you've become a better money manager and you can start taking on your past old debts one at a time and solve the problem yourself between you and the creditor. If you do that, your credit score will recover much more swiftly than if you have declared bankruptcy. Hmm. So, and you'll have the satisfaction of knowing you tried to make it right the best you knew how. Yeah. And make sure you hear what he's saying. If you have declared bankruptcy, it's not, oh, well, it's The beautiful too thing in America yeah. is it's not final. It's you not, can start over. Yeah. You can so, rise like a phoenix from the ashes, get fired up. Yeah. Didn't, don't tune us out if you have fi- filed for bankruptcy. Know that there is hope for that. So that's awesome. All right. Ready for one more? Yes. Okay. Should I cash out my retirement accounts to pay off debt? We get this question a lot. We do. We do, yeah. Oh, man. Well, I, maybe not a lot. By the way, these are all great questions. Yeah. These are fantastic, and we're talking about lots of things. We've talked about how much money in emergency fund, dollar cost averaging, investing, retirement, and lowering cost of insurance. Uh, this one right here, 
Should I cash out retirement accounts to pay off debt? Uh, no. <laughs> Don't do that. Um, I'm not a fan. Absolutely not. It's called retirement money, uh, not get out of debt money. You've developed a different voice. You like this new voice? I'm thinking about doing an entire podcast in the vo- in this voice. No. You can vote whether or not you want this voice or this voice uh, by emailing us. Yeah. And include financial questions at the same time. But it, I would just say, no, don't do that. And it, listen, there's a penalty for early withdrawal. Uh, there's taxes due. It could actually bump up your tax bracket and take even more of your earned income that year. There are so many horrible things that happen, and the biggest one is you robbed yourself of your retirement. Right. And one of the things I point people to is to learn the rule of 72. The rule of 72 is where you divide the number 72 by the growth rate of your investment, the annual growth rate, and it'll tell you about how long it takes your money to double. The better, the more accurate number is to divide it into 69, but that's a harder division number. Mm-hmm. But let's say you, your investment grows at 10%. 10 into 72 is 7.2. So it will take about 7.2 years for your money to double. Hmm. Let's say you cashed out $50,000 of a retirement account and you had to pay a 10% penalty. So there's five grand gone. You had to pay taxes of 25%. So there's another 12 and a half thousand gone. So you end up netting home 32,000. That's kind of sad, right? It is sad. So you get $32,000 and of that $32,000, you pay off this debt, right? Is that great? So here's the issue. You had 50000 And let's say you're 30, and you're going to retire at something like, I don't know, 28 years later, 58. Let's, let's say 35 years later, 65. Sound good? Yep. At that rate of return, if your rate of return is 12%, it would double every or uh, at 10, 10%, that'd be seven years or so, your money's going to double five times because you got 35 years to retirement. Your money's going to double five times because it doubles every 7.2 years. Yeah. You ready? Let's double this 50,000 five times. You ready? Let's go once. Let's double 50,000. I'm asking you, Megan. 100. 100? Double 100 again. 200. Double it again. Four. Double it again. Six. No, eight. Sorry. 800. Sorry. Double it again. <laughs> I'm looking at your fingers and it's Double like- it again. Uh, from eight sixty one point six million. So when you cash out fifty grand as a thirty year old, you cost yourself about one point six million in a retirement account. Do you really want to do that? You literally robbed yourself of one point six million dollars. Mm-hmm. But they think it's a fifty thousand dollar decision. I just remind you, hey, that ne- name retirement is there for a reason. The reason why the government penalizes it. It's because they know that you need that money for retirement and they want to make it painful for you to take it out early. So please don't do that. The only time I would ever advocate doing that is to stave off bankruptcy. And I actually wouldn't even encourage it then because a lot of times your retirement account can't be touched for bankruptcy's sake. Hmm. And so I really encourage you, don't do that. Awesome. Well, our helpful tool today is the I Was Broke, Now I'm Not app, which... Yeah, it has all these tools on it. Download our app. Just search in the Google Play Store or the Apple Store for I Was Broke Now I'm Not. You'll find our app. It's free. I think you can afford that. Yep, and you can have your budget in your pocket with you wherever you go. Yes. Okay, and we have a key financial quote. Do you want to read that one? Yes. It's from Confucius. The man who asks a question is a fool for a minute. The man who does not ask is a fool for life. So I just wanted to share that today to say a lot of things about money you just don't know the answers to. Ask the question. You might feel foolish, but you'll get the answer. And that's how you learn. Awesome. Perfect. Well, we have a few minutes left. We can do quick hot seats. Okay, quick hot seats. So what was the last movie you watched and would you recommend it? Free Solo. I don't know what that is. Oh, come on. Unbelievable. It is the guy, the first guy ever to free solo climb up the face of El Capitan. Oh, I heard you talk about this the other day. Oh, without ropes. That sounds... 3,200 feet on a sheer granite cliff, no ropes. He's went up Half Dome Rock. He's climbed over 100 faces without ropes. Watch it. It's two hours uninterrupted on Nat Geo every now and then. Or you can pay six bucks to watch it uh, online. And you know what? That would be a worthwhile use of money if you budget it. I do recommend it. It's (laughs) phenomenal. 
All right. Are you more like your mom or your dad? I'm more like my dad. And uh, he's a crazy entrepreneur. He's hard charging. He's fired up. Uh, he has boundless energy. He's it's I, I'm more like my dad, mm. but I'm taller than both of them. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right. And real- I'm the youngest of six. <clears throat> so I always say I'm their favorite youngest child. Do you get how I said that? But I know I'm not the favorite. We know that my third brother is my parents' favorite. Really? That's funny. <laughs> um, and last question real quick. Favorite Bible verse or book of the Bible? My favorite Bible verse is Proverbs 21.5, which we say all the time when I'm teaching. Proverbs says the plans of the diligent lead to profit. As surely as haste leads to poverty. It's why I'm so passionate about a plan and being diligent to follow the plan. Favorite book of the Bible? Man, I would probably, if I had to name it, Proverbs, hmm. the book of Proverbs. So much wisdom for all of your life. Read it. There's 31 chapters. Read one chapter a day. You'll get through it about 12 times a year. That's awesome. Okay, so for our next episode, we're going to be talking about... I'm so fired up for this next episode. (laughs) Our topic is foolish money mistakes, Um, So, because our next episode is April 1st. That's right. That's a creative title. Yeah. Foolish money mistakes on April Fool's Day. That's right. Coming at you next Monday. So we're going to be sharing foolish money mistakes that you should avoid. So make sure you tune in for that. And if you like today's episode, please help us get this podcast to other people who could benefit. You can do this quickly by rating our podcast and leaving us a review. These ratings and reviews help us to make our podcast better for other listeners. And make sure that you send in our questions or your questions so that we can answer your questions um, the last Monday of every month. So throughout the month, send them in. You can send them to info at IWBNIN.com, and they could be featured on the podcast. And if you implemented one of our tips or tricks and you have a success story, please send that in as well. We'd love to share that. So, That's right. Yeah. This podcast is fueled by your success. Until next Monday, get fired up. Do something right now with your money so that you're better next week. See you. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Monday Money Tip Podcast presented by I Was Broke, Now I'm Not. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review and subscribe. And for more great content and to stay up to date, visit IWBNIN.com. We'll catch you next time.